You were last with us in Plage Melanger, where we swam amongst the incredible Pigeon Island Reef, hitchhiked around the island and went on our friend's boat to an anchorage with hot springs in it. Oh, and it's been a little windy here the last little while. That's crazy! However, since then, we had a sugar puff sail down the coast. I'm gonna have some cereal. And does anyone remember from the UK? I think, I don't know whether they still do them, but they're, they're called like sugar puffs. But anyway, we found some in a car four here and they are wonderful and they taste exactly like they did. Sugar puffs, yeah. They taste exactly like they did when I was a kid and they used to have the toy in the box. We used to always rummage down, get the toy out before your siblings. But anyway, we found them here. And they are great, except you have a bowl and about half an hour later, you just have such a bad sugar crash. <laughs> so I don't really remember that from when I was a kid, to be honest, but <laughs> yeah, going for the more adult choice today. Cornflakes. We're healing slightly, which is nice. Yeah, we're humming along at the moment. It's actually really nice. The sea is flat. This is cornflake sailing, Zach. No, it's sugar puff sailing. I don't have sugar puffs. But if I did, it would be sugar puff sailing. To an anchorage in the south called Bass Terra, where we witnessed carnival for the first time. Install a new toy. Ah! Break onto a catamaran. Yeah, we really didn't see that one coming. Another couple in the anchorage brought their little kid over because there was one hatch open about that big. Jan lowered him by his arms down into the cabin and he came around and opened the door. And then they managed to hotwire the engine basically and get it started by that. <gasps> and nearly got blown off a mountain. For those who have joined our story here, hi, we're Becca and Zach. We bought our boat Tailey last March after saving for years. And after six months of figuring it all out in the UK, oh, we ditched the lines and really started the adventure. So come along with us for the highs, the lows, and absolutely everything in between. Because we're not just doing it. We're bloody doing it. We're going up there. All the way. Oh, to the top. It's a hard no going in there. It's pretty hilly, got a loop, isn't it? <sighs> oh, nearly at the top. <laughs> What's happening? The lock is jammed, so we're just going to leave it here because um, we've got the boat off, luckily. I'm going to come back with some WD-40 and some other stuff and trying to get it off. The guys on the cat came over and they said, like, oh, do you want a hand? And I was like, yeah. Um, if you guys yeah, know anything about locks, I used to pick locks. And he started, he started fiddling with it and he was like, I don't think it's um, jammed or anything, I think it's broken. Oh, really? But I, you, I couldn't for the life of me cut that because it's hardened steel. So, so were you trying to cut it when they were I, well no i started cutting it and then i was like i don't think i'm gonna be able to cut that so i just cut the chain and the chain came off oh you cut the chain it was, just, it was it's one link we blocked in the end yeah that, that's just not the end of the world we're in a beast of a car we are currently waiting for yan siri reese and neve which are our friends from zora and i can never say the name of the boat so I tell you, Elias, so I tell you, yeah that Elias, one that one and we've rented a car for the next two days. It's a people carrier, people, it's a family car. It's really it? funny. It's um, proper, it's a, it's it's a proper grubby, up. but it's proper cheap. <laughs> but it was 40 euros a day, and we got, and it's a six seater, which is amazing. Seven English. seater. Seven seater, yeah. oh my, we can take everyone. We can grab a hitchhiker on the way as well. <laughs> but we've got a provisioning day planned today, and provisioning and City. Decathlon. Yes, yeah, and... city exploring. Chandleries. We need to fill up a gas bottle, kind of like a job stay. And tomorrow we're going to hopefully go to the volcano and the 
what else was there? Waterfalls that on yeah. the islands. And we'll just, get up early and we'll just hit a ton of things. Yeah, we're excited to explore the island, to be driving again. It was such a funny process. <laughs> the woman just had like this little notebook and she just writes down 80 euros and my phone number and we said should we pay now and she's like yeah you can pay on sunday when you drop it back and we're like okay so we've signed no contract and we've paid no money mm -hmm. <laughs> they've given us the car the car keys so i mean yeah pretty trusting but yeah i love it out here everything okay yes sir yes but for you, I just see you were speaking English. I say, my son helping you. Oh, yeah. He was helping you. He was, being very, helper, he was being very helpful. Thank you very flew much. from, uh, yeah. Uh, near London. Oh, London. London, yeah. England. We've England. got a, I'm on a sailboat here. Oh, you're on boat? Yes, I'm boat. Okay, <laughs> have a good kind of year. Thank you very much. You. you too. What's it called? Volcano Souffle. Need what's it called? Souffle. Superior. Superior. I'm sure. Great job. It absolutely stinks of sulphur up here. Yeah. I think it's these clouds that are above us right now. It didn't just a second ago though. No, it's got an absolute what there. We've really picked a good day. Right. The views. Golly. Windy. Look at That's it. What they're talking about. Woo. This rock is forbidden. You can't see them. Ah, okay. Yeah. Right. Well, that was a little bit anticlimactic. Not only was there no view due to the thick clouds, but a local told us we couldn't go any further, so back down we went. However, we still had the car for the next few hours, so we were determined to turn the day around and have some fun. It's a great look. Beautiful. Like a cabbage patch kid. <laughs> the yellow crocs and that. So look. I'm actually a style god. Oh, who needs to spend money? This is so fun. Feet up, I'm going down. This anchorage, we've seen so many boats drag through. It's not even bad holding. I don't think people have put enough, enough chain, but they've just hit, well, I think they've hit our friend's boat. And it's a beautiful catch. They got made brand new a few years ago. So that's really painful that they're currently against it. They're getting out fenders, but two boats have floated out this anchorage in the last three days, two. One was the Coast Guard had to go knocking on one because it was just drifted out to sea and they were still on board. And the second one, there was a post on the Caribbean Cruisers Facebook group saying, has anyone, is anyone near this boat and can tow it? We tried towing it and it, we can't tow it in. And it was two miles offshore from our anchorage. What is it? I don't get it. Is it just us that uses an anchor alarm? I guess when you're off the boat, but the other boat that drifted out to sea, they were in 18 metres of water and they had 40 metres of chain out. And we're in 8 metres and have 52 out. So I don't know if that says anything about how much chain you need, but the boys are in the dinghy trying to act as big fenders on the stern, but we have a gust coming as well.
they seem to have got the engine on, which is good. Except now that I don't know where they're going. <laughs> I think they're going as far away from everyone else as possible, but they need to let the boat owners or charter people know. They're <laughs> just going. Bye, Zach. Bye, Reese. Bye, Jan. <laughs> they're off to Dominica. That's funny. I think they literally are going to try and be away from everyone else. The people who are going to get back and say, where on earth is our boat? That's kind of funny. Well, it's not funny, but you have to laugh at like the little things, don't you? Because otherwise you'd just be stressed and sad all the time. That's crazy. Yeah. Did it hit their boat? What? Did it hit their boat? Yeah, it did a little bit. The noise heck. Not too badly though, it scratches uh, teamwork off boat. Really on a lot of places? Yeah, I was literally in between both the boats, just like arm on each side, and the dinghy was in the middle of them trying to stop it. Oh man. What did you get all these scrapes I from? I don't know. Oh my gosh. Is, yeah, it set, so, is it set now? Yeah, so they barely had any chain out at all. Um, it's set now, well, I hope it is. We literally dumped out all the is chain it? they had on there. Yeah, is anyone on it now? No. I don't know how we're gonna like flag down the people who it belongs to. Oh, you tried ringing the charter company. Yeah, and they didn't get through. No, they didn't answer. In the end, to get that cat started, um, another couple in the anchorage brought their little kid over because there was one hatch open about that big and lowered him by his arms down into the cabin and he came around and opened the door and then they managed to hotwire the engine basically and get it started by that. <gasps> And now it's way out because everyone was like, "Why are you gonna put it?" It's like, "Don't put it back in the same spot." They're like, "Just go over there, <laughs> right out of the way." When they can't drag into anyone any else. They're gonna get there and freak out though. Yeah, I know. But I mean, they it, had like less than two to one out. It was stupid. It's really, less than two to one. Awful. Like barely any chain. Yeah. After that fiasco. We set about opening a parcel we collected back in Plage Melanger. So I'm off today to go and get our Starlink, which has arrived in Pont de Pierre. Yeah, the main town. The main city town here, and Becca's just dropping me off, and then I'm gonna get buses and hitchhike all the way over there, and I'll probably have to get a bus all the way back because the package is quite big. Guys, I don't know who's gonna pick me up with yeah. a package like that, so. You guys are about to go on a big adventure, so. Yeah, wish me luck. Okay, See you later. Have a good day, all right? I'll message you. He's off. You probably all guessed what it was after we spoke about it last. We've just ordered a, a really good solution for it, and I think you guys can probably guess what it is. I got a really nice lift from a guy who's teaching CrossFit out here. I'm going to try and get my second lift all the way to Pointe de Pierre now. I got a really nice lift with a, a painter. He's really nice and pretty much drove me all the way across the island. He was going in a different direction, so he dropped me off. And he was staying another two hours from where I was, but it's just like, it was over a main road. So I didn't have to go over the main road. I found an underpass, went through that and then had to bushwhack for about 20 minutes there. And I think I brushed up against some plants, which didn't agree with me because I'm a little bit itchy now. I found some farmers and they've pointed me in the right direction now. So I'm back on the a sort of road, I guess. I'll show you exactly where I am. But it's been a bit of an adventure, but it's been quite fun. I am just coming into a town now, if you can see there. I think I've only probably got another half an hour of walking, so I'm just going to walk the rest of it out now, because there's probably not much point hitchhiking now. So I'm just down the road from the DHL place, finally. Um, I got a bit stuck in that last place, because I either had to walk along a really crazily busy road, or just wait there. So I had to wait for a while. Um, for someone to pick me up but it's about 11 in the morning now so I've still made pretty good time getting here I'm about 100 meters away from the actual place now so that's a bit of a mission to get here but lo and behold after two car rides three buses and an hour's walk later <laughs> shoulder to shoulder all the way back. Oh, was that? And it took so long, didn't it? Yeah, I had three buses on the way back to get here. There's no buses to go through the centre of the island. No. <laughs> good job. I bet you're happy you hitched like on the way there. Yeah, yeah, and it's way nicer than buses. Oh, good job, Zach. 
proud of you. Yes, and your phone's fixed. Yay! And it was finally time to open the box. Ta -da! Ah. Guess what we got? Da -da 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 -da. A knife. A knife. You ready? <laughs> we have joined in the. What is the. It's, like the herd? It's almost like a trend at this point just to have Starlink, but I mean, it actually works and we are so stuck on the internet. We've just been it's been quite good this last week, hasn't it? But we've it had has. a lot of other issues since we've got the Caribbean with internet and everything like that. And we've been talking about getting one of these since we left the UK. And we just keep on hearing good things about it. And Essentially, the reason we didn't get it when it was in the UK, <laughs> when we were in the UK, was because A, we didn't have the money, but also we heard rumours that you can't bring it between continents. And we kind of didn't want to be the guinea pigs to find out whether you could or not. So we kind of let a few people cross. <laughs> And then we realised that, you know, the, the boat doesn't explode and, you know, it doesn't stop working when you cross an ocean. So we then decided it's time. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. So we've got instructions here. Seems pretty self-explanatory. No touching. Yeah, don't touch. Oh, we just did that. Oh, God. Got a power cable. I guess this is the router. Ooh, that's so, so nice. nice. It looks like an award. We won something. A lot more cable. We bought this for 450 euros, and then you pay 90 euros a month for the unlimited internet. And we got the RV one because the marine one is kind of for only for super yachts and the and house really one. And really expensive. Yeah, and the house one you can't transport, so this. Yeah, this I think you've got to pay a get. little bit more because this will actually move to pick up the satellite. Yeah, how much is it a month? 90, you said. 90 yeah. euros a month. So a little bit more than your traditional SIM so, card, yeah. but in Antigua, we bought a SIM card for over 100 US dollars and it was like 70 gig of internet and we used it in a week and a half just uploading YouTube videos. So. I mean, it is worth our money <laughs> and it will work literally anywhere. Our friends were crossing the Atlantic and had it for like 600 miles offshore. At the moment, we don't want to make any permanent mounting solutions. We don't know what's going to work best on our boat. So what we're going to do at the moment, we've got a spare rod holder and this tube here, I'm fairly sure will fit, just slot into it. Mm -hmm. So what we're going to do is we're going to put the rod holder away. I think it's going to be good at the moment. All right, so I'm not having to make a few modifications on this because this tube doesn't actually fit all the way through that and there's this big gap in it at the moment. So what I'm planning on doing is just getting rid of this altogether and we can put that back in if we want to make a rod holder again, so we'll hold on to this. I've got the tube here now and it's gonna go through here. The wire is gonna come through the bottom here and just stop the whole thing because at the moment, if this goes up through here, I'll just show you roughly what it's going to look like. If that goes through there, it's going to rest on the upper bit. So I kind of want to put a bolt just so it sits a little bit higher, just like that. I've got some old wetsuit as well, just so we can wedge it in really nicely because I think it's going to rattle and potentially get scratched on that. So we're going to wedge these in um, just below this line so you can't see it and hopefully it won't move at all. I think that's pretty good. Right, the moment of truth, it's all set up outside. I'm going to go plug in these final bits. Don't even know what's going to happen now. Okay, so it's just asking me to set up the name and password. Becca, what do you want the name of it to be? Wi-Fi. <laughs> All right, super high Wi-Fi. Super high because it's like satellites. We've been trying to reach you by your car's extended warranty. <laughs> <laughs> um. We could just call it free Wi-Fi. <laughs> cool. After getting reconnected with the world, we headed into town in our very waterlogged dinghy where we experienced our first taste of Caribbean carnival.
The next morning, with a slight headache, we headed to Fort Louis Delgrès. Built in 1650, so the then owner of Guadeloupe, Louis Delgrès, could watch over Bass Terra from his house. Got some fancy sunnies they've got. Hey, don't steal them. Zach, give him back his sunnies. Oh, that's better. Thanks. <laughs> it was really interesting wandering around the infrastructure, which used to be such a symbol of power over the population. It changed names a few times over history, from Fort Royal to Fort Mathilde to Fort Rich and Penance, and even Fort St. Charles as the island became occupied by other nations. It was changed back to Fort Delgrès in 1977 to celebrate the original hero of abolition and is now classified as a historical monument, which is free to wander around. After a bit of a history lesson, we headed back to Tailey and hopped in the water to grab ourselves some dinner. For those that don't know, Zach is a marine biologist, and so we decided to share a bit about our catch today. So this is a lionfish. Um, there's loads of them around here. They just kind of, you can find them around reefs and around wrecks and loads of other places. But they're actually invasive all around here. They go as far as Rhode Island, oh. and then all the way down to Columbia, um, mm. along this Atlantic coast along here. And they're actually introduced here by ballast water being dumped out of uh, ships from I think they're from the Indian Ocean and people who have them as like exotic pets in their fish tanks didn't want them anymore because maybe they got too big or they probably ate all their other fish in there so they just dumped them out in the sea to get rid of them and this they spread them. and they've got no natural predator here and they absolutely eat everything. None of the fish around here really know to avoid them because they haven't evolved with these guys around so they just just kill and consume everything. So it's really good that people are like taking these and eating these and kind of getting rid of them from the reef because it's helping the ecosystems here a lot more by getting and rid of these guys. Number one big question, does it have cigatera, which is a reef fish disease in them? As far as we know, they don't. We looked at some papers from Guadeloupe, I'm sure we can find them and put them in the video link or description or something like that, about cigataria in fish around here. We will try a little bit of this tonight and then if we're not a little bit ill tomorrow, we'll have the rest. A lot of people are put off by eating them because these things here are all poisonous spines. So it's not in the meat at all, it's just in all of these like barbs they've got along here. So when they're out on the reef and they're feeling threatened or they're just floating around, they have all of these things extended all the way. But all you need to do with these is be a bit careful. I'm gonna put on some gloves in a minute. You just need to cut off all of these mm -hmm. and then we'll fillet them and they're actually really, really nice fish to eat. So we're basically gonna do that for all of the spines he's got on there. So even down these ones here, down here as well tail and then especially these big bad things up here as well hope you found this a good one next time we head to a place that was incredibly hard for us to leave for many reasons pick up a mooring boy for the first time and have a fair bit of anchorage fun see you then